Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video we are exploring something a little bit different or a little bit different for me at least basically this is eclectic vibrant colorful modern and clean junk journal meaning that there's no tea dyeing no coffee staining no inking the edges and all that sort of stuff no distressing whatsoever no vintage themes or themes in this journal I was really inspired by this project that I made. This was my last video you may have seen on my channel. And this is where I explored 30 decorative page edge ideas. And I was really inspired by this look. So I did kind of hang on to that kind of a feel for this journal as well. So there's beautiful edges on this journal too. But this journal is made from a cereal box and it's actually a writing journal as you will see we'll go through i'll do a flip through whereas this one here is an altered book and i'm going to turn it into a writing journal but it's a little bit different this one was built from scratch all right let's dive in so like i said this is made from a cereal box and i just want to show you the fabric that i used it's kind of hard to see on video but it's white with silver so that's all silver you can see it a little bit better there it's got four signatures as you see here and that's what it kind of looks like from the top and from the side you've seen i'm gonna have to count the pages i think there's so there's 11 pages per signature and there are four signatures so i'm gonna times 11 by 4 that gives me 44 that means there's 44 sheets of paper that i've then folded in half each one of those sheets of paper has four sides so i'm going to times 44 by 4 and that gives me 196 pages in this journal and pages basically means sides okay now i'll show you what i've got here at the front i have a little book plate here it says capture life's moments and then this down here there's a few little things happening so i'll take it out you can see this is attached over here and i have a little pocket and this card uh, was actually sent to me in Happy Mail and I thought it looks fabulous for this. Even though perhaps you could say this frame here, is it distressing? I don't think so. Anyway, it looks good, so in it's gonna go. And then I have a tag. I was, I have to say, as I was working in this journal, there's a few more tags here. Because this is quite different from my usual style, I have to say that when I first started, I struggled because I wasn't sure kind of what colors to go for because a lot of colors flash, uh, clash. And in the end, I decided to do all colors and not worry about it. Okay, so here we have a pocket and, you know, I'm a sucker for inked edges and finished edges. So because I'm not allowed to do any inking in this journal, that was my own kind of a rule, I just used a marker and a little bit of doodling. I just wanted to give this edge a finished, neat kind of a look. And then I'll have this large white tag and this other little thing that's gonna go in there. I mean, anything can go in here. In fact, I was gonna put in this journal belongs to maybe something like this. This is actually, this book belongs to. This was out of, I cut out, out of a book. So I'm gonna pop that in there. And then this actually came from, uh, this was given to me, let's just say, and it's such beautiful, vibrant colors. And I thought uh, I'm gonna put it into a pocket, then it couldn't fit into any of the pockets. So I'm just gonna leave it there at the front. Maybe we'll turn it this way. So because there's quite a few pages here and many, many, many things to look at, I'm gonna go through quite quickly. So here is a vellum page with some flowers that I've done in my previous video. 
here is a doily and then this is cabbage dyed paper so it was in my stash and it was blue and i put it in there so i don't know if you would think of that as distressing the paper but it's not you know doing it vintage style this actually came from some type of packaging and then i painted on it and then i made this flower ages ago i actually have a tutorial on this these uh, flowers from you can see the book pages and magazine pages and all sorts of fun stuff and it fit perfectly in there this is kind of like a journaling spot but you know i just kind of make made it look pretty and then over here this is also an idea from the previous video using the stickers and if you've seen that video you know how much i love this look and so i used it in this book and it goes absolutely perfect with white paper so i don't think i have ever used maybe i have i don't know maybe i'm lying when i'm saying this i don't think i've ever used white white paper in my journal and i think doing these edges with the stickers looks absolutely exquisite okay now over here this is a pocket page and i'd like to say that i actually did a whole lot of sewing in this journal this here is an envelope that opens up i created a lot of extra writing space as you will see as we go along and i did a lot of sewing all in different thread this here opens up i love these interactive elements i also have a video i'm going to link in the description box and up here 10 stunning and unique page types and elements for your journals and in that video we discuss things like this i don't think this is one of the ideas to be honest because anyway i don't think it is but anyway have a look at that video and you'll get lots of these types of different you know ideas okay i'll keep going here's a tag in that beautiful little pocket looks like a fence or something and then this is another white page that i kind of hated sitting in there i just used offcuts uh, when i was actually making the front and back cover see this here when i was making that i had to cut off the corners of this beautiful paper so that i can wrap it around this board and then i had these offcuts and then i used my punch to punch out that flower shape and underneath i put the other side of that paper so that you can see that blue coming through and then yeah it's just little details that i feel like i really felt like i needed to dress the white pages i don't know if i've left a whole lot of white pages but we'll see as we go along here we have a pocket and obviously you can see a bit of fabric there that i've sewn onto the edge i'm just going to tuck that in there this what the idea for this was to have that in the middle of my signature look how cool that looks i was actually going to sew it into the book because i absolutely love that look but then i decided that the recipient of this journal which i think i will be selling this journal i might do it on like an auction on ebay or i'll just put it in my etsy shop we'll see and then i thought maybe the recipient would like to do something different with that another thing that i also did that you will notice is used different colored threads throughout so we have blue we have red we have black green and so on this is actually a page from a book here another white page and i just use some stickers that i have here's a little dragon what are they called dragonflies okay now we are in the middle of the first signature and there's a whole bunch of stuff here that's happening i absolutely love this paper clip that i made this blue doily was sent to me in happy mail and i think that's done with um what is it that it's called in us kool-aid or something like that or food coloring i'm not sure but it's a beautiful vibrant blue color it's kind of muted in video and i just made that into a paper clip you know used layers of that and then my own little thing that i had in my stash and a little brad there in the middle and then i was looking for colors that are gonna go together so here's more writing space in there this came out of a magazine wisdom can come from all kinds of random places i wish it said creativity or inspiration i wish it said inspiration i should cross that out and write inspiration can come from all kinds of random places okay what have we got here here is a little envelope from my previous project it's a leftover it's from this project and if you haven't seen it you probably should because look it's nearly december probably will be december by the time you're looking at this christmas is coming up and basically this book it's an advent calendar 
it's I will be linking it so you can have a look it's an advent calendar in book form and this is an envelope that I had left over from that project so I just popped a few little bits and pieces in there and now it lives in this journal this here I'm not going to take it out is body tattoo you know body tattoo stickers I don't know if you've seen them before but I find that they actually work really nice on leather and faux leather and in fact this is what I'm talking about I had to go rummage through my stuff so you can see I applied that there that's supposed to go on jeans I think it was um, but this is my very old planner that I have and I think that looks really nice so oh so does this is quite inspiring my little reminders that I completely forgot about okay let's move along I have an oversized tag in this pocket as well and these two things I've shown before that th those are cutouts from magazines and then this one here opens up I just love having all sorts of different elements and um, interactive little things in a journal that are working that are like this for example look at this this opens up and then we have stuff and then we have this at the back of it so there's lots of little things to kind of explore and also I didn't want to go overboard with embellishing this is a whole lot more than I usually do and if you watch my channel you will know this by the way this here I have a tutorial on making these bookmarks how beautiful does this look so I just kind of put it anywhere and there was a whole lot that I could choose from and this is all from making that video this would kind of go on something Victorian kind of vintage -y, I suppose I was going to use this one for this journal but then in the end I opted for this one here so anyway have a look at that video if you want some inspiration but first of course watch this video to the end because all of the videos I mentioned will be linked in the description box under this video. And the thing is, I make tutorials on all of these little things like, like this, for example. And then I use those things in my journals. So as I go through, you'll see, like for example, this here is also a tutorial. So this is a hidden paper clip, altered paper clip. And I also have a tutorial, obviously, as I've just said. So this is an altered paper clip or hidden paper clip. I'm gonna link that tutorial. You can't see that paper clip anywhere. And I decided to take this one out of this journal because it's kind of cheating. This is tea dyed paper. I didn't even realize I just pulled it out of my stash. I mean, okay, let's go. Maybe we can go with this one. Anything goes. I really like this one, even though this one looks really nice for kind of a Victorian kind of a feel. I'm being stingy with my things, if I'm being quite honest, because you know you sometimes you just need that perfect thing so in any case that's what that is and basically you can put it onto the side of the page like this that looks quite nice in fact i think i like that one better so i'm just gonna leave it there or at the top of the page or you can clip it underneath like down here as well so you can clip your things that way whichever way it works all right i'm gonna pop this in here this is kind of like um washi tape clear sticky tape or clear washi tape or clear stickers it's pretty cool this is from grabby i'm gonna link that video i don't know if you want to see <laughs> that video that's also anyway um yeah but probably these two don't go together so well but it is what it is so here i have a paper clip what i was saying before you can clip from underneath i'm sure you know that and this one yeah this is another little thing that i got in happy mail and it, this paper is i'm not sure what color was used to color this because i didn't make it myself but i thought it was perfect for this journal and then i have some little stickers here and i attached a little charm there to the paper clip so there's all sorts of fun stuff because i'm all about fun stuff okay here is a short little page with a pocket leftover pocket and again i was hating the non-finished edges and so i just used my marker instead of the inking so is that distressing i don't think so it's a completely different technique and then here look at this stitching i mean i stitching sewing on paper is just one of the things that i will always do in this pocket there's like i said creating extra space because oftentimes i feel like i'm taking away from writing space in which case what's the point for example 
Okay, this, yes, definitely writing, but I covered a white page with this piece of, of, of paper. And now I'm covering all this writing space, which to me feels like, what's, why are you doing this? You're making a writing journal. Why would you go and cover pages like here we've covered, but you can still write. There will be a better example. But in any case, then because I'm doing that, I kind of felt like I need to create writing space. So there we have it. Look at this. Have I ever in my years of making journals left a white page in a journal? White. There's absolutely nothing on that page. I don't think I ever have. So there we have it. Nothing wrong with a white page. This here is a magnetic bookmark. So I just popped it here to the side. And how exquisite this this blue paper with the stitching look. And I used two different colored stitching um, threads, I should say. So I have pink and I have red. These are all the details that you can't really see in video, but you can see in person if you were to own this journal or live through this journal that's when you notice all the little things all right so that's the end of the second signature moving along to the third signature here i have some beautiful handmade paper and a page from a book white page you know i usually tea dye these types of pages and this here is this it's um promotional thing for some event and you know, how fabulous does this look? So I just cut it in half, one half on this side and the other half on the other side, made it into a tuck spot and covered it with a doily. And then any writing that you can see, because you could see a little bit of this writing, I, you know, underneath the doily, I just put a little sticker in there. And then as I was talking about writing space, this is, here's what I mean. I covered all of this writing space with this tuck spot because we're making something beautiful and fun and just because we love it and sometimes it doesn't make sense so you know like all of this stuff to someone who doesn't is not into it it's not going to make a whole lot of sense to me it makes sense so because i'm covering the writing areas i'm creating more writing areas and this is way more fun when you go into your journal and you're about to start doodling and drawing and stuff this is more fun than just a plain notebook all right, this is a glassing bag that I've covered with some scrapbook paper. And then I created a little notebook, quite colorful in there, you know, with the red and the pink paper, which I have quite a little bit off of, and I don't know what to use. I'm losing my words. I'm trying to say I have a lot of paper, pink, red, green, blue, purple, that I have no idea you know, I have to kind of use a little bit here and a little bit there because I never make these types of journals. Here's some feather stickers. I'm always going for the vintage and the distressed. Now I can use up all of that stuff. This was made in also in a video. And that video is called Turning Book Pages into Writing Spots. So basically what's happened is I created this project and in order to create this project, I had to remove some book pages. And then I used those book pages to make this project. And then I had still a whole lot of book pages left. And so I created this project and made a lot of these writing areas. So we're using book pages and creating writing spots. Okay. If you haven't seen that video, it will be linked down below. But I still am using these book pages up like I'm not throwing anything away until I have a use for them. So you can see when I was drawing the edges on, you know, on this and on some of the pieces in here, I'd be using this to protect my desk. But then I think, oh, I can still use that piece of paper. So I still keep it, which is a, a, an illness, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a definite hoarding behavior on my part. So I'm aware of that. Here is more writing space. These are envelopes that, I don't know, I, I got them somewhere. Oh, I wanted to tell you about this. Glorious white paper. You can feel it, so I will have to describe it to you. Actually, I'm not going to describe it. I'm going to show you what it is. It is stone paper. Have you ever seen stone paper? I haven't, I, I didn't know it's a thing. And I can't even explain how it feels. It feels 
very sleek, smooth, I don't know, it feels cold and it's very hard to tear. So I feel bad doing this, but I'm gonna do it just to demonstrate. You see that I had to put a whole lot of pressure. Like a lot of pressure to tear that paper. I'm trying the other way now. I feel so bad about this. Oh, how will I ever forgive myself? Okay. I wanted to show you stone paper because I didn't know such a thing exists. You've probably seen stone paper before and it's no big deal to you. But let me tell you, when I saw that, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> Let's move along. We have some Christmas ribbon here. You know, it's a bit of gold because why not? This also came out of a video using up paper strips. And then I'm not gonna take this out. This is a, a little mini CD case. So it's got a window and I glued down a little thing. And now that goes underneath here. And it's just, you know, creating and uh, clipping in a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, look at this. This is the middle of the signature. But would you look at that? And then of course what I've just shown you. And then that opens up. Voila. <laughs> So I don't know if this is in that video that I mentioned before, 10 stunning and unique page types or elements for your journal. But this is definitely the kind of thing that I've spoken about in that video. And this is a 12 by 12 page. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff with, with this. Like you can have it open up. You can have it, you know, when you open it this way and then it can open up this way. And then you have it like open this way. You, you, there's many different things that you can do. So I'm not sure if I shown you this particular one in that video, but have a look at that video. You're going to get lots of inspiration and very quite, quite easy to do. You just fold it in fours, this type of thing I'm talking about now. You just fold your 12 by 12 paper in four, and then you do one cut to the middle and then you play around. So when you're binding, I actually had it closed let's say and then I, I bound that into the book that's pretty cool moving along now this here is a little banner this uh, came in something for it's actually for little kids parties it's actually for baby shower girls baby shower but i like to do this it's kind of like um closed you know secret writing spot i suppose and this is that stone paper which of course i wanted to leave untouched this came from a little book and then this is a glassine bag and I just popped a few little things in there and also made a pocket here at the front with that tag. So as I said, I was going with vibrant colors and fun, bright things. When I first started making this journal, I really struggled. I honestly struggled because this is not my type of thing that I do. I like um, distressed edges, I like inking everything, and if you've been watching my channel, you will know this. This here is an altered paper clip, came from a video, um, actually this also came from that same video. The video is 10 washi tape ideas or something like that, 10 things you can do with washi tape. I don't even know, I'm going to link it down below. And this is also in my stash, pretty cool, like instant page embellishment, goes onto white page and you know, it looks quite cool. I'm really trying to find a space for this. It's a tag with wrapped um, washi tape. So like a little charm. As I was saying, I really struggled. Here's a little extra notebook that I popped in there because we're creating more writing space. So I was contemplating on putting elastic. I could put elastic in between each of the signatures because as you may have noticed, there's quite a bit of space. Let's see, see that? All that space in there i can put like a elastic maybe silver elastic if i have in between silver would look really cool or even this gold i think this gold looks really really nice with blue in general so anyway if i had that in between the signatures i could then go ahead and pop in little notebooks like this and bind them into the book they could be removable little notebooks so 
it was an option that I was thinking, of course, it would kind of mess around with the spine a little bit, which is nice and clean at the moment, nothing happening there. But then, you know, you can do this in general with journals, you know, you wrap around, if you have enough kind of a wide spine and enough space in between the signatures. So that would work. But in all honesty, this journal is a little bit of an alligator mouth. You can see that quite a lot of stuff in here. So if I was to be adding more, if I was to be adding more stuff, then, you know, it would create more of an issue. I think I showed you this, but I just want to point out the wiggly lines on the paper and actually blue thread on this side and red thread on this side. And we've seen all of this. And now third signature just used. This is actually cut out from a large tablecloth, I think it was. And I have an envelope in here. Can you see that? Just really simple idea. Kind of similar to what I did here in this altered book and also here on this page just using leftover strips of scrapbook paper or whatnot but in this case instead of like uh, making writing spots on pages that you can't write on because clearly you can write on this page it's not you know it's clear you can write on it so i just created a tuck spot and also a tab moving along this is pretty cool Here's another butterfly that I was going to include in the middle, but I decided to, you know what I did? That's what I did. I wanted, the idea was I wanted this butterfly to stick out so that then I could put eyelets here on the wings and have little charms hanging and then you'll be able to see it when the book is closed. That's the idea. But I decided not to do that because by gluing this butterfly down it would have to be glued down in order for it to stay because it would have heavy things on it if i was to glue this butterfly down i'm covering a full page it just didn't make much sense and it's just too much of a beautiful piece to be sitting in there doing nothing absolutely nothing because it's glued on a page what do you do with this you know so i wanted it to be on the page but i didn't want it to be permanently stuck down i also wanted it to protrude out and I didn't know how to hold it in place you know can't put paper clips anyway really so hook and loop it is I think what I wanted to say before and I never actually finished the point is that when I first started making this journal I was struggling struggle town it was let me tell you here at treasure books struggle town and then I got a little overly excited about this whole project that I ended up doing way too much, too much things happening in here, which is just perfection in my eyes. That journal is one, very, very heavy, two, very, very full, alligator mouth, doesn't close completely. So perhaps there is a little bit of too much stuff in this journal, but I like it. Here is the other side of this scrapbook paper that I used over here for a pocket. And there was a little bit left over, so I just popped it in here and created a pocket. Now look at this, how cool does this stitching look? And I used blue and red thread, which I know it just seems like a whole lot of work. You know, you use the blue and then you use red, you're like, you have to change the thread. And it is a lot of work. So I'm not gonna lie, I did not make this in a couple of hours. Let me tell you that much. It took a while, many, many, many hours went into this journal. I would say approximately, let me just think about that, I'll get back to you. Here's a little thing, this is from a magazine, this image, and then I have this little thing that's from somewhere. Now this, okay, this image came from a magazine and, you know, I didn't back it onto anything, so I just left it like that. And if you have a close look, these are drawings done by an artist and the drawings are done, I don't know who, I really should have written it down somewhere, but please forgive me because I didn't. But all of this is thread, thread on fabric. So look how cool that looks. Okay, me and my son went out the other day and got some sushi and these are the bags. Uh, not this, but I actually asked them to give me an extra bag. And it said sushi, sushi up here up the top. So I chopped it off and I made this into a little something. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a paper bag, basically is what it is. You know, but the person who gets this journal, 
might want to do something with this so there it is and then on this side i mean you know it's i have a bit of ephemera this is something that i've done a little while ago just sewing down pieces of fabric onto cardstock and then you know little bits and pieces tag over here this here is the leftover from this flip out page which i didn't give enough attention to i think i like i really like how this looks in general flip out pages flip out pages interactive pages in general are my favorite i love that kind of stuff that's what drew me to this craft the fact that you have this and then you have that and then you have look at this look at this look what are we coming up to oh, fun stuff and then there's little stuff there and the other side of that stitching so all i did is a wiggly line in blue and then change the thread and change the setting to that zigzag stitch and then i'm just following the blue line right and that's how i get maybe i kind of went off course here a little bit you can see i mean if you look closely plenty of mistakes everywhere i am not a seamstress i really you know learn as i go you can see it's not perfect very close together very far apart you know when i point it out you can see it but i bet you didn't see it before and if you did it really doesn't matter there's a sticker here and a little something over here and by this stage i was getting fed up with this journal let me tell you a little something here this is a cut out from a what is it a book it was a some type of a book and love this image and how it looks it actually looks like these are actual buttons doesn't it because this isn't 3d it's a photograph that was in a book but this is all stitching this is this is actual buttons you know these are actual beads here so it looks lively and vibrant moving along a bit of lace here on the side and again this you know adding more extra writing space this is a quite a large page there's really no need for me to show you how large this page is but there it is i am so another little paper clip with a charm and an envelope here and this little pocket i'm gonna it's a it's removable i'm not gonna take it off but this is a removable pocket and it's held up here with this clip and then i just put in some tags extra writing spot i often get this question so i'm going to answer it now but before i do oh how nice does this look this here is a double belly band basically so you can see that and then you can see that and it beautifully blends in with this image here you may think that the grass is green on the other side and you know the book continues but we don't know we don't have the next page but i can assume that it will say something like but basically the grass is not green on the other side oh about the tags i've made so many videos on my youtube channel i have a frequently asked questions video where i answer all of the frequently asked questions look how cool that looks exquisite isn't that just stunning the image with the, this handmade paper pearlescent you can't see because it's not coming up in video and then we have the stitching just looks beautiful people ask very 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 often what do you use the tags for but before i continue let me show you this it's not a big deal really it's just another little extra journal with these beautiful pages beautiful papers in there this is just cardstock and i used the ribbon binding which is quite straightforward just two holes there in the middle and you pop your ribbon through and you tie a bow up here and there's a little mini journal so this type of thing beautiful to have inside a journal so this is a page from a book it still has the price on it i didn't pay this price i probably got it for free from the op shop you know from the throwaway pile and anyway i just popped that on top of the page and i didn't clip it down or anything because it doesn't you know when the journal is closed when it's up when it's you know it's not going to go anywhere so it's just sitting there look at that so cool so back to the tags tags are basically little you think of it as a little canvas here's another white page used off cuts again from when i was doing the back board and the front board and instead of doing the punched out little things 
I just left them intact and just added another little piece of ephemera. And I want to share something with you very, very quickly because this is my new system of storing die cuts. These are all of my die cuts that used to sit in bags. And then you never know what's where. Like if you're looking for something in particular, how do you find it in, amongst the bags? So basically what's happening here is I have my die cuts and they are removable because I used a little bit of double-sided tape to hold it in place and they stay in place. And I think it depends on what kind of paper. This is quite thick cut. Well, it's not that thick. It's just thicker than standard paper. It's just cardstock. And so I can easily, you know, remove them. I do kind of have to turn them a little bit in order to remove, but it comes off intact. The reason why I mentioned this is when I was making this journal, I wanted something here and it had to go. And there's a lot of things you, you might think anything will go. Let's see what's on my desk. This kind of goes. This is a handmade button that I made into an earring, but it does go. What else? That was a fail. Everything goes now, doesn't it? That doesn't go. The point I'm making, I wanted something here that really goes. <laughs> and so instead of kind of uh, rummaging through my bags, which I wouldn't have done, I can go in here and just open this book and see right away everything that I have on hand. What do you think of that idea? It's not my idea. No, I can't. I cannot claim it as my idea. But it came very in handy when I was making this journal, especially here towards the end, because I was kind of over it. It was late at night. Look at this. How cool. How Just this on its own. Like when you see the whole thing, you have to see all of this fun stuff here and then like a slide. Looks really nice. Um, yeah. So, oh, here's another one. Oh, I love the interactive elements in junk journal you know you open this open this in reality how practical how practical is this perhaps not the most practical thing in the world when you have this page and then you have all this space underneath so how do you write on it, it can be done i'm not saying that it's impossible i'm just saying that perhaps it's not practical perhaps practical to me is not as important in this craft as it is in maybe i don't know house cleaning i have two pieces of uh, ephemera in there just to clip down this is packaging and i was going to make it into some type of a notebook or something like that i decided to leave it as it is because it's absolutely beautiful packaging and it does have a vintagey feel so kind of cheating a little bit there but you know we're nearly towards the end and i was just like get it done it needed to be done here is an envelope, absolutely gorgeous, goes beautiful with this color. And then this little charm on the side. And look how cool it looks on this side. And then a pocket, this is also from a magazine, Flow magazine or something like that. I have some tags in there and extra writing space because I'm covering all this writing. I'm covering the writing, then I'm creating extra writing space. It is a little bit silly, really, when you think about it. This is the middle of the last signature, just a white page. And again, I did the two thread things. This is a tag that's clipped on, it's blue tag. I'm not gonna take it off, we'll just leave it in there for now. And I found this in the magazine, things I want to say, but don't. Seems like I'm saying a whole lot of things in this video. I can feel that I've been talking way too much. All right, this is another thing from my stash. Look at that beautiful embossing on that paper and a bit of, interest there and then again altered paper clip you know not everyone is into the vintage style this came off of clothing uh, purchased clothing and obviously this one can open up i'm just going to leave in there this is a sticker so you know we love making journals but and we love to give them this is a tag that opens up so it can be kind of probably could put it down the bottom like this but then it will fall out. I didn't want to use a paper clip for some strange reason, so I decided to put it upside down on top of the page like that. It's quite nice. I think this type of, I mean, you know, I've seen journals like this before. It's not like everyone makes vintage and distressed. It is the popular thing. 
you know, vintage in distressing, paper dyeing. It's quite fun and all of that stuff. But it's not for everyone, and especially if you're gifting it, perhaps they don't really know, you know, what that's all about. And we're nearly at the end. We are at the end, handmade by Natasha from Treasure Books. And then I have this. This is like a writing board, basically. You just put it under your page that you're writing on. Look at that. Paper clip in the way. You can even see it. And you can put your writing board underneath, and that helps. So that's what that is. And as I was saying, if you're gifting your journals to someone, maybe, you know, go for the white and bright. I was calling this white and bright the whole time in my mind, but it actually has not that much white in it. I find personally, and I've said it in plenty of videos that I have done, the grungy style, the, I don't want to say dirty because it's not dirty, has a negative connotation. The heavily distressed, Okay, I was trying to find something to show you, uh, to demonstrate my point. The heavily distressed, you see this, you know, really vintagey looking kind of like um, coffee stained, tea dyed and scrunched up and all sorts of things happening here and here. To me, this is easy to do. I think the grungier, honestly, the easier, you don't have to worry about thread that's not straight or like splitting stitches. And I mean, not that you have to worry about that anyway, but we are adding all of these things to make it look like, um, you know, messy. It's not really messy, but this came from my video where I'm using zippers, okay? I will link that video as well. Uh, 10 different, I don't know how many different ways of using zippers in your junk journals. So if you have a look at here, you just stick anything down, you go with a bit of stitching, you go, this is, these are all things from my video that's what happens when you make a lot of videos this video is from this is from diy acrylic paint skin so that's where i make large pieces of skin let's call it with acrylic paint it's really cool and then i was cutting out little bits and just gluing them down and look at that pretty cool and we have thread and we have mess, 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 mess. And then whatever happens goes, you know. You have these pages that already have a crinkle. So if you do this and you get these little creases in there, it's really no big deal. It goes with the whole feel. However, when you're making a journal using brand new things, non-distressed, beautiful, perfect, pristine pages, in my experience, I find that I have to be so careful with them because if I scrunch this one up, see that? I got a little crease in there and now that's all you can see. But if the whole page was already tea dyed, already wrinkly, that little bit there wouldn't matter. So that's why I found this project a little bit challenging, probably because it's out of my comfort zone. There's a lot of things that I wanted to mention and I kind of kept jumping from one thing to the other because this is most definitely not my style and I have seen other people, you know, other people's videos in this style come so naturally to them and I wanted to try it. I think it's nice to try something new and to see where it takes you and also I suppose to encourage because I don't want to be making the same thing over and over again. I think variety is the spice of life. And in all honesty, I thoroughly enjoyed this project. Obviously, I was heavily inspired or influenced by my previous project. You can see that. Only now I have applied some of these ideas into an actual, actual journal. And, you know, I think... It turned out pretty cool but the front cover was most definitely a struggle if you look at it upside down you can see all of the things that don't go so the one thing that I can definitely see that I'm not liking very much is this book plate is quite small compared to all of these things happening here so perhaps what I could have done is maybe added some more layering underneath to bring that up to make it more plan one because the book plate is kind of the main thing on a, on a book cover. Maybe not. But when I turn it upside down, I can see that this doesn't really go with that because that's quite rich. And then this is boring up here 
I wasn't going to go into all of that, but uh, all I want to say is that the front cover took me ages. And that's what happens when you're out of your comfort zone. You know, usually front covers are like maybe not spend two hours on it like I did on this one. But anyway, it was a whole lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I apologize for all of the rambling and everything is kind of all over the place. I'm trying to show you what I did and also talk about this thing that I just popped into my head. I hope I didn't do it, you know, overdo it, I suppose. I hope you feel inspired. That's the main thing. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.